Hello, my name is Andy and I am the Village Idiot. I'm armed with a car and a GoPro and an unhealthy amount of time on my hands. I'm using that time to attempt to visit every civil parish in England. You're watching the Cumberland series, 128 parishes in what used to be Carlisle, Copeland and Allerdale in Western Cumbria. Let's dive in and see what we've got today. Welcome back to Cumberland, folks, where the wind, thankfully, has died down on the next day. It's not raining, so hopefully today's going to be a good day to get round four villages here in this part of Cumbria. Now, I'm standing here next to a perimeter fence, and as you can see through the fence, it just looks like a whole swathe of nothingness. Well, it is these days, it's not used for anything, but that used to be something very, very important with military connections. It's the former Royal Naval Armaments Depot at Broughton Moor. Welcome to the parish of Broughton. This video is sponsored by Bassett Law Pro Clean, specialist floor and upholstery cleaners based in Retford, Nottinghamshire. Do you have a commercial space, own a restaurant, hotel or pub, maybe an office block? Bassett Law Pro Clean cover the entire country for commercial work. And they have a special offer. Quote the village idiot when you inquire and get a massive 7.5% off. Need it cleaned by the experts? Contact Bassett Law Pro Clean now. Here's my disclaimer for people who may be watching me for the first time. I say things as I would in my native accent and dialect. As a result, I may not pronounce things in the same way as the locals do. Remember, I'm a visitor. It's impossible to know everything. Leave me a comment, spin me a like and bash that subscribe button. Let's get to today's parish video. Round two in Cumberland sees us take on the parish of Broughton, located just to the east of Camerton, where we were last week. It's important to make the distinction here between Broughton and Broughton Moor. Although the two are inextricably linked together, Broughton Moor is its own parish and will be covered as such in the future. However, they do come as a package and between the two, they do share some facilities. Broughton itself is made up of two settlements, Great and Little, and this main walk today covers them both. They sit pretty much on top of each other on top of a shallow hill overlooking the River Derwent, six miles or so from Workington. Historically, Broughton was wholly agricultural until the 17th century, when small-scale coal mining began in bell pits around the village and on Broughton Moor. It was this mining that led to the discovery of rich clay, which attracted expert potters from Staffordshire. They and their families would settle here. The result was that Broughton became agriculturally important in the summer, but in the winter, the potters went to work. The Industrial Revolution in the 19th century greatly expanded coal and clay mining exploits. Now all the mining has gone, and Broughton has become a nice, peaceful commuter settlement for the towns of Workington and for Cockermouth. Let's see what it looks like today. We start outside the former Royal Naval Armaments Depot on Broughton Moor, which was a major landmark until 1992. The abandoned depot, which is still off-limits to the public, opened in 1939 on the site of a former colliery called Buck Hill. When that closed in 1932, three square miles around its spoil heap was enclosed for use by the military. It was used by the MOD until 1963 when it was leased to the Germans. The US then took over in 1977. 
They used it for storage of armaments for their North Atlantic squadron, which were flown in and out of the site by a helicopter. The site had a narrow gauge railway and locomotives from it are preserved on the Almond Valley and Whipsnade railways. The nearest residential street is South Terrace. These were originally MOD police houses and they're now private residences. After the depot closed, it was returned to the former Allerdale Borough Council for redevelopment, but nothing has yet been built here. Okay, so now we've come down away from the armaments depot and into Broughton Village itself, and I found a wild Nicky who is here again. So hopefully this is going to be a another nice little walk like the Camerton episode was last week. Uh, it's, a, it's a much bigger village though, this Broughton. There's a, a lot more to see. It's got more of a, a village-like feel. Less of a hill though, thankfully, so there won't be as much traipsing up and down the uh, the inclines as it were. Our first job, sorry, let's get, on with it. let's get on with it. Our first job, once these seagulls have shut up, is to walk up to this building here and go along Broughton's main street. Our main walk begins in Great Broughton on Main Street, which runs from west to east, almost parallel with the A66. Most of the local facilities are to be found on this road, with notable exceptions being the church and the village hall. Here's a shop, the only one in either of the two villages. On a Friday, the mobile post office stops here for half an hour. There are many interesting buildings along here, this one looks like an old school, and at least two are, or were, pubs. One of them is Brewery House. This was forced to close temporarily last year thanks to rising Covid cases in the area. A little further around the route we'll encounter something pretty awesome that the locals did in relation to the pandemic. Next we have a big white building which as far as I can tell is just a house, despite looking like it should be something communal. Next to it is Broughton Bakehouse. This was a sandwich shop that served hot food and cakes, but it's now permanently closed. And then we come to another pub, this time the Punch Bowl, which was originally a 17th century coaching inn. Okay, so that's the main street. First impressions, Nicky? Very, I, like, I like the odd shapes of the houses, they're quite fun. Very narrow street, isn't it? Mm. Not a lot of room. A few cars that come down here and you have to be careful because there's not always a footpath. So yeah. you kind of have to watch your step, you have to know where to walk. It's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a quite complicated at times. Yeah, there's a lot going on here as well, there's services in the village this morning. Yeah, there are, yeah. Okay, so we're going to continue down the main street. We're going to take a left turn and it'll take us up towards a Baptist chapel, which is probably up your street, isn't it? Probably. Let's go. Let's go have a look. At the end of Main Street, the road becomes Harris Brow. At the junction, we found this pretty little Millennium project. Awesome stuff. Moving on along Harris Brow, we find the entrance to Broughton Grange and to Westwood, a B&B &B with a view. And we pause to sample that view ourselves thanks to a bench on the corner of Crags Road. All that was missing was a brew. Ever since the 17th century, Broughton has always been a local hotbed for the Puritan nonconformist. On Meeting House Lane, we find the Baptist Chapel, which dates back to 1672, and it's still in use today. Here's a Commonwealth war grave belonging to a man with the surname of Lister. Remember that for later. Up the side of the chapel is a rocky footpath which runs to Little Broughton. At times, this was like walking in a stream. It ends at a rather unusual cemetery. This is the Friends Burial Ground, where local Quaker families are interred. There are very few marked graves in here, and in true Quaker fashion, their headstones don't reveal much about them. A Quaker funeral is generally a simple affair. Sometimes there's a reading or a song, but mostly it's a time for quiet reflection and thanksgiving. 
A lot of the graves here share the same family name. One corner, for example, is given over entirely to the Pearson family. Now, as you know, Nikki likes a good mooch around a cemetery and a friend's burial ground. I don't think you've ever been to one of these before, have you? I have been to one, but they're not that common or rather not that well known because they're usually like this, tucked away somewhere that's off the beaten path kind of thing. Um, but here, I mean, this is just a gorgeous setting. I mean, if the sun was out, you'd see a fabulous view across the valley there. You know, you really would and across, you know, the... To, I can't remember what the name of that place is, but it's Brigham. Okay. Anyway, um, but yeah, the, these are just very small, um, usually family orientated. It looks like we've got all the same family in certainly in one section. Um, but yeah, we, we don't see them an awful lot. You, you see them a lot in America, but we don't see or know of an awful lot of them here in the UK. Um, but yeah, this one's quite nice. It's very peaceful. We're now in Little Broughton, which once upon a time used to be a separate, clearly distinguishable settlement. Both villages initially grew thanks to coal mining and clay extraction, but were still definitively different places. The oldest part of Little Broughton is where we are now, the area around Pump Square, which would have had a water pump at one time. Once separated by fields, the need for post-war housing has filled the gap between the two Broughton settlements. Here's a bus stop. The Broughton villages are on the route of the number 68, which runs between Cockermouth and Maryport. Like Great Broughton, Little also had a non-conformist chapel or two. Chapel House, seen here, is testament to that fact. Lister's cottages over the way give us a second mention of that family name, and it won't be the last either. The Sundial Pub is next. This is so named because it has an actual sundial, although where it is we never found out. On Winder Lonning nearby is an evangelical church. This used to be the Friends Meeting House and it was originally built in 1687. Well, quite a lot in that little section actually, it's all sort of clustered together. I'm beginning to think it, that's typical of these places out yeah, here in Cumberland, isn't it? Yeah, it's more than what you expect, isn't there? There's, there's been a, certainly a lot more than I've anticipated in this one. Indeedy, indeedy. I would like to know, by the way, if the sundial is indeed open, because it doesn't look very open. It's, uh, yeah, it's it looks shut. Like a dwelling yeah. in, the, in the pub. It's still got the sundial on the side, but uh, yeah. I'll have to do some research. We'll have to do, yeah. Right. Okay, onwards. well, onwards, uh, the uh, village hall is next. Originally, there were several public meeting places in Broughton, often owned publicly or by trustees. The village hall is the only modern meeting place. Nicky did the honours with the parish notice board, and that's two down in Cumberland. Now on Kirk Lee, we find the biggest recreational space in the parish, the welfare field with its sizeable playground. There's a tarmac path which runs alongside the park and eventually goes to the local school if followed all the way. Here we are though at Christchurch, originally located between Great and Little Broughton before all the new developments. By the wall is a headstone with the names of those cremated and interred in this garden. These are a local feature in Cumbria. By the path is the War Memorial, a rough hewn stone with its top worked into a point. There are 26 names on this one in total. Christ Church was built in 1856 from local stone. It's a simple design with a nave and a chancel and a sanctuary one step higher. In 2015, a new community space was created at the back of the church with toilets and a small kitchen. The churchyard is quite extensive. It stretches for a fair distance into the estate beyond and you'll find a lot of Listers here. The Lister family have been prominent locally since at least 1648. A lot have now emigrated to America and New Zealand.
Okay, so we've got one section of walk left. This will take us past the school. Now, if you come out of the church onto the road that runs alongside the western edge of the churchyard, you'll be faced with what looks like a brand new estate. And the road has a very nice crossing for the children. That's quite cool, isn't it? If you follow this path, it will take you down to the primary school. Nikki's already over there. Give us a wave, Nikki. <laughs> we'll pass the school and it'll take us down back towards the nook where we started. Our last landmark, of course, will be the allotments. The current Broughton Primary School was built in 1846, replacing an old 1735 school endowed by Joseph Ashley. In front of the main building, we encountered these brilliant lockdown stones created during the COVID-19 pandemic. I found this a poignant reminder of those dark times, and I'm sure this kind of thing will be seen more often as we travel around. At the entrance to the school, you'll find more buildings with a religious nature. Nikki thought this may have been an old chapel. Over the road, there most certainly is a former chapel. This used to be brought to Methodist Church until it was sold in 2015. More road brings us back to the start, almost. There's the small matter of West End first, the village's oldest part. Nikki couldn't resist having a look at the listing for this old barn, currently for sale for around the £295,000 mark. It seems there are more than just a few barn conversions in this part of Great Broughton too. Here's another one next door. This house nearby used to be an old betting shop according to its nameplate. That's rare to see a bookies go out of business. Back Lane then appears on the left, a grassy mud track which loops around all of those properties providing this view. And there are two patches of allotments close by. For those who are new, finding these has become a running joke. Okay, so we've, we've arrived back at the Nook after about an hour and 20 minutes walk around the lovely village, the parish of Broughton. Uh, we've got one more thing left to see before we leave this one though, and that's the River Derwent, which is in the valley below the village. If I turn the camera around here, you can vaguely see the Derwent in the distance there, but we can get a bit closer. There's a bridge which crosses the river towards the next one. And that is where we're going to end this episode. Separating the village from the A66 is the River Derwent. The two are linked by a road bridge which spans the fast flowing waters. The bridge was built in 1832 and it's coped with many things in its time. The area around the bridge often floods. However, it's rarely a problem for the village. The last time the Derwent did any notable damage was in 2009. The floods that year badly damaged the bridge and it had to be closed for a while so that structural engineers could assess the impact. It eventually reopened in early 2010 and it's been fine ever since. They built things to last in the early 1800s, you know. And to finish with, we drove over the Derwent towards the A66 as we made for the next one. That will be coming next year now, so all you Cumbrians that have been enjoying our local videos so far, check back here in January for number three. Until then, have a very Merry Christmas, and I'll see you on the other side. Thanks for watching this video folks don't forget to like this episode if you haven't already it really makes a difference with youtube if you're new here subscribe to the channel for more videos like this and give us a share too if you've got friends who'd like it you can find all the links to my social media accounts below as well as my buy me a coffee page where you can donate to the channel also if you've enjoyed this episode have a look at some more videos in this series until next time i've been andy also known as the village idiot and i'm out <laughs>